the brain is locked in silence and darkness inside the skull. And all it ever sees are these little electrical signals, which also, you know, can cause chemical release and so on. But you've just got these electrochemical signals running around in the dark. And yet when you open your eyes and look at the world, you see everything in full color and it looks so rich and so on. And you're hearing music and, and you know, you're feeling things on your fingertips and you're smelling cinnamon and all these things seem like very distinct senses to you, but they're all made of exactly the same stuff, which is these electrochemical spikes. And so I got really interested in this idea of, could we feed information into the brain via an unusual source? And would the brain just figure it out? And so what we did is we built a vest that had vibratory motors on it. And this was for people who are deaf. It can capture sound and turn the sound into patterns of vibration on the skin from high to low frequency, which is exactly what the inner ear does. And, and we put it on deaf people and trained them. And it turns out that works great. You can learn to hear through your skin. And it's because essentially the brain doesn't care how the information gets there. As long as it gets there somehow, the brain will figure out what to do with it. And the way it does is by making correlations with other senses. So, you know, you see the dog's mouth move and you feel the barking on your skin and your brain figures out, oh, that's the sound that goes with that. And so I gave the TED talk on it where I showed the vest. And then in the interim, what I did from that time is I shrunk it down to a wristband. I actually spun a company off. So I should say we shrunk it down because the whole company was involved in this very hard work. Shrunk it down to a wristband and we're on wrists all over the world. And that's not only for deafness, but also for tinnitus ringing in the ears. I can explain how that works if interesting, but also for age-related hearing loss. So as people get older, they lose their high frequencies. So we just use machine learning on this wristband that listens in real time for the high frequency parts of speech, like a TH or an S or a V or a B. And it buzzes your wrist in different ways to let you know, hey, I just heard a TH, I heard a B, a V. And so what happens is your ear is doing all the work at the medium and low frequencies, and the wristband is just clarifying what just got said at the high frequency. Hmm. And it turns out that works like gangbusters. Your brain can learn to fuse those signals quite easily. And after a few weeks, people, you know, they don't need hearing aids. It replaces a hearing aid. So your mind fills in the blanks once you develop the ability to associate. Exactly, because your mind is getting the information now through your wrist, through the skin mm -hmm. of your wrist, which is essentially acting like a perfect inner ear. We're just transferring the inner ear to the skin, essentially, and, and that just passes the information into the brain. The brain says, oh, I got it. That was sheep versus sheet versus chic. You know, mm -hmm. it just figures out, it just it gets the information from the wrist and puts it all together. So for the wrist to work like the vest did, what was the most important technological innovation? Because I think of the surface area of the vest. I'm like, okay, your ability to discern, say, vibration at the chest versus the back would be fairly, it would appear to be fairly straightforward. But once you constrain that to surface area and contact on the wrist, I would imagine that probably incorrectly, but I would imagine that to be much more difficult for the user to parse and learn to decipher. It's actually not because you have very low spatial resolution on your torso. In other words, if I... Right, it's the density. Exactly. So you have higher on the wrist, but your intuition is right that there's just less room on the wrist to stick motors. So we have fewer motors than we had on the vest. It turns out we use a an illusion, which is if I stimulate two neighboring motors, you will feel one virtual point in between those two motors. Yeah. It's like binaural beats with audio. Yeah, exactly. And as I change the amplitude of those two motors, I can move that virtual point around. So oh. we're actually stimulating 128 virtual points on the wrist. Is what oh, that's clever. You clever bastards. Good for you. 